Plus, they can always fast forward to the part where we start the lecture. Oops. Good morning. Hamlet, right? Yes. Hey, all right. A little extra credit for being here early, so that's two point uh, four six points instead of two point four. Isn't much, but it all adds up. Morning. Camera here. Five minutes early. We get a little extra credit for attendance. Is there a football game this weekend? Yes. Where where is it? Oh, uh, Westland. Okay. Well, good luck. Good morning, Cooper. Good morning. Good morning, Ray. Good morning. 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 Five more points for the cans. Uh, go ahead and send me an email to remind me, please. Did you do one last week? Did you bring in? You didn't bring any in last week, did you? Oh, you did. Okay. Okay. That's the tip. All together, tip that. Okay. Elias is here. Good morning.
So I know there's a football game this weekend. Does anybody have no plans for the weekend? Oh, I'm envious. I would love to do nothing. Working. Oh, well, that's plans. That is plans. This is the last week of the online semester. It's been a busy week for me. So I'll be busy finalizing grades for those students. Morning. All right, it's 8 o'clock. I'll go ahead and take attendance. Let me move this over here to make sure I'm recorded as I'm doing it. So, Cooper's online. Breeden, not present. Elias is here. Davis is here. Lloyd is here. Hamrick is here. O'Brien is here. Ray is online. Michael Baumgartner is online. Pena is absent. Sigmund is absent. Bayard is absent. Johnson is absent. Huffman is here. Hamlet is here. Fitzpatrick is absent. Thornabar is here. Lacey is absent. Tyrus Baumgartner is absent. Byrne is absent. Hill is absent. And Sullivan is accounted for. All right. Anybody I missed online or in person? Doesn't look like it. Uh, before I get started, since I'm recording this, for those of you online, I'm sorry to do it. But just like last Friday, I'm going to do the same thing where I post questions, and that'll be what you do for attendance. Um, what else? Yeah, I just wanted to let you know that beforehand. So if you feel like you need to get up from the computer and use the restroom or grab a cup of coffee or whatever it is you need to do, that'll be just fine because, you know, for attendance, you'll have to watch the video and answer the questions anyway. Speaking of attendance, for all of you, to remind you, I'm going to put this in writing one last time over the weekend, you can still go back and fix your attendance. If you missed a day, go to that public website or what, that sheet that I gave you, look up your number and say, okay, I missed this day, this day, and this day. And then look back through your emails to make sure you didn't email me and I didn't make a mistake, in which case I'll just fix it. And then if you are truly absent, find the video, answer the questions, and then there you go. You get half credit. And if you can't find it, because sometimes it is tricky, come to me. I will help you find it, and we can get your grades fixed for attendance. What else? I think that's it for attendance. Um, lab. Somebody brought up a good point about lab. Yes. The last lab. Um, the photosynthesis lab. All of you only did one experiment, right? So you were forced to rely on your classmates for data, right? Other than the one that you did. And even then, you're still working with people. Um, so if you look at all the tables, other than one, I think one of them was pretty spot on. Excuse me. One of the, uh, but the rest of them has some really weird looking data. And I'm sure as hell not going to take any points away for that because it could be that that weird bad data truly is what happened, in which case you shouldn't lose points. Or it could be that you made a mistake, whoever did the experiment, in which case you shouldn't lose points. It's okay to make mistakes. That's why we're in lab. You guys aren't biologists. But what I want you as critically thinking college-educated citizens to be able to do is look at a set of data and see the red flags. Like if someone says, hey, listen, masks are dangerous or vaccines are dangerous, or whatever data they're giving you, this is pertinent in this pandemic, they give you this information. And I want you to better look at it and say, okay, I see what you're saying, but I don't agree with the conclusions that you came up with from this data, because this looks out of place, this looks out of place, and this looks out of place. And this tells me either somebody messed up the experiment, someone is falsifying data, right? There's something wrong here, and there should be red flags. And that's what I want you guys to come up with. So because of that, if you go back and look at each table, and comment on it and tell me what you think is wrong, I will give you extra credit. And I wanted to clarify that. I know I already wrote, I know I already wrote that down yesterday, but I want to clarify because you are not going to get points deducted for that. That's not your fault if the data is messed up. But I am offering extra credit if you can talk to me about what the problems might be. Is everybody clear on that? I'm not going to penalize you for wrong data. Okay. Um, the other thing is, some of you have seen it. Some of you seem to be dismissing it. Please read the announcements I'm putting out there. I'm putting it out there because some of you are really, really failing and really need the points. And for some reason, and I'm offering extra credit for just reading my announcements. And for the most part, the only people who are reading them and sending me back the emails and saying, I read this, can you give me extra credit, are the people who don't need the extra credit because they're passing already, for the most part. So please read your emails. I'm giving you hints, trying to help you pass this class. I'm here for you. But you've got to put in you've got to put in some effort. But anyway, sorry. Get off the soapbox. 
Let's talk about this exciting stuff called mitosis and meiosis. Sure, that's what everybody wanted to do on a Friday. While I'm getting it pulled up, does anybody have any questions about labs or independent work? Um, exams, I'm gonna share those scores with you soon. I just have to go through. I like to triple check scores before I release them. I did, so I will say this, this is the best yet, oh, the best yet, it's only the second exam. The grades for this exam are better than the grades for the first exam. And that takes into account the fact that you guys were allowed to retake the first exam. So even taking those numbers, your numbers this time were better. Um, that's because for a lot of questions I gave partial credit. <laughs> for example, the photosynthesis questions that say, hey, which one uses water? Well, there's only two answers, two possible answers for photosynthesis, light reactions or Calvin cycle. So as long as you chose one of those, you at least got half a credit. If you chose something crazy like glycolysis, which is part of respiration, or mitosis, which we haven't even covered yet, then you got zero credit. So I built in some partial credit for people who were slightly awake during my class and said, oh yeah, we're talking about photosynthesis, so I should at least talk about light reactions or Calvin cycle. The points were built in and I think it showed. Anyway, let's get into this duplicating chromosomes. It's been a while, Monday is, uh, you know, we had the last lecture on this on Monday and then we took exam on Wednesday, so here we are. I want to remind you what we talked about with eukaryotic chromosomes. Actually, no, I won't. The previous bullet point was information basically that you needed to understand what we're going to talk about moving forward. So what I'll do moving forward is when we come to a term that we talked about on Monday, I'll refresh you and remind you what that term is. But let's talk about duplicating chromosomes. And a lot of this you'll probably already know because you've already done the pre-lab for this week, right? For last week, this mitosis, meiosis pre-lab. Some of this should be a review. So again, this whole chapter is about cellular division, right? Cellular reproduction. That's what this whole chapter is about. Um, so because of that, we've already talked about the fact that cells need to divide. And what do we do before the cells need to divide? The DNA has to be copied. You already know that from the pre-lab, right? That was one of the questions. In which phase um, do cell, did the chromosomes duplicate? And the answer is S phase of interphase, right? And we'll talk about that in the lecture, but you've already been exposed to that in the lab. What we didn't use in the lab was this term sister chromatids. And I know this seems trivial, but please, please pay close attention to that word because it's very important. Sister chromatids. That's what happens when a result Cop or that's what happens when a chromosome copies itself, right? And once that happens, it is no longer a single chromosome. It is then called a sister chromatid. And imagine if for some weird reason that's how humans duplicated themselves. Instead of having sexual reproduction, imagine if I was like, all right, I need another me, and I just stood up in class like this, and then all of a sudden, bloop, another human came off of me, right? And we're attached maybe at the waist like Siamese twins, but it's just two perfect copies of me. Well, it wouldn't be perfect if it's me. You know what I'm saying. There'd be two of us attached to the hip. Perfect identical copies of each other. That's what a sister chromatid would be. Let me try to draw it. This is going to be horrible. Bear with me. So assume this is a chromosome. A little centromere here. Yeah. All right, that's just a regular little chromosome. Now it's like, uh-oh, I'm about to go through mitosis, so I need to copy myself. I need to duplicate myself. So this chromosome... Excuse me, there's a centromere. It copies itself. And then there you go. And then you've got, I know it's a different shape. Oh, come on. Partially it's a different shape because I'm a horrible artist and also because it won't stay. But anyway, try to imagine that if it looked proper. I'll show you pictures later from your textbook. Ah. But that's what a sister chromatid is. You have the one chromosome, it duplicates itself and then they're attached to each other. Um, this little thing in the middle that I was trying to draw where they're attached is called the centromere. This is gonna make a lot more sense when I show you the next slide and you can see an actual picture of it. But the reason this number, or this is so important to make sure you remember it. A lot of this portion of the exam is gonna be comparing and contrasting mitosis versus meiosis because we're gonna learn mitosis, right? You're gonna learn that. And then when I teach you meiosis, the way it's gonna be is all right, remember when mitosis did this? Well, it's a lot very similar except this difference and except that difference. So one of the differences is going to be this word right here. So when you think of sister chromatids, for now, you should just think of mitosis. And this is going to be very important later. 
So please, please, please pay special close attention to that word, sister chromatids. And I'll ask you if you have questions here in a minute, but I want to show you this next slide before I ask you if you have questions. So here we go. There's your one chromosome up top, right? This is, this is your chromosome. It's just doing its regular thing in the cell cycle. It's in G1, which we'll talk about later. And then all of a sudden it hits S phase and it's like, all right, I'm about to duplicate or my cell's about to split, so I need to duplicate. So it does, it duplicates itself. And now you have a perfect copy. This thing on the left is a perfect copy of the thing on the right. They're genetically identical, they're the same thing. They're attached right here at the centromere. They're ready to go. That's what sister chromatids are. Are there any questions about what sister chromatids are? All right. So here again, we've, we've duplicated these chromosomes. These sister chromatids are now separated or together. Now the whole cell needs to separate, right? And when the whole cell separates, obviously so do the sister chromatids. And once that happens, once those sister chromatids that are attached to each other are separated, at that point, they're considered a regular old chromosome again. They're no longer sister chromatids because they've been pulled apart and they're just called chromosomes again. I mean, this is an important slide, but not as important as the last slide. It's more important that you understand what a sister chromatid is. Because again, you're gonna to need to know the difference between a sister chromatid and this other thing that I'm gonna tell you later. Yes, sir. So once they separate and become identical, I mean, uh, individuals, they're just a regular cell again. Yep, just a regular old chromosome, yep. They're no longer considered sister chromatids, they're just regular chromosomes once they separate. And this next picture I'm gonna show you is a good, it's a perfect drawing of it. So far it's pretty simple, I hope. So there you go, this is what we started with, right? We started with the one chromosome. That's probably in G phase, G1 phase. Oh, it gets ready to duplicate, so it duplicates itself. That's in S phase of interphase. Then it goes through mitosis and they split. So these sister chromatids are now considered um, full fledged regular old chromosomes again. They're still identically or genetically identical to each other. They're still genetically identical to the first chromosome. Actually, spoiler alert, and we'll talk about this later. Of these two, nah, I don't want to say that. We'll get to it later. But yes, they are genetically identical to each other and genetically identical to the first one. So any questions about what a sister chromatid is? And you can even for now not even focus on the fact that they separate because we're gonna talk about that later in more detail when we talk about mitosis. All right, there's no questions. The next thing we're gonna get into is the cell cycle. And again, you've been um, introduced to this in lab if you did the pre-lab. And off the top of my head, I think everybody but one person did do the pre-lab, so you've seen this. The thing that's very important to remember about the cell cycle before I get into it is that you could almost think of it as the whole life cycle of a cell, from when it started to when it split into two new cells, right? That's the cell cycle. That's the whole thing. Now, within the cell cycle, as I'm about to show you, that's where mitosis is, right? Mitosis is a part of the cell cycle. So keep that in the back of your mind. It's mitosis is a part of the cell cycle. Um, the cell cycle is not a part of mitosis. So just like if you were to look at the clock, right? There's a whole 12 hours. You would say, I don't know, the afternoon is part of the day, right? Because the afternoon is one chunk of the day. If you were to divide the day up into morning, noon, afternoon, evening, whatever, right? That's a part of the day. But you wouldn't say the day is a part of the afternoon, right? Because you wouldn't say that that whole 24 hour period is within the afternoon. So just keep that in the back of your mind when we talk about the cell cycle. We're talking about the whole thing here. And mitosis, which is what we're going to talk about later, is just a part of that. Um, you don't need to necessarily write any of this down. This is what I said. This is just what you need to keep in the back of your mind. You can write down if you want, but I'm certainly not going to ask any questions about this. But it is an ordered sequence of events, just like your life, your life cycle would be an ordered sequence of, event, of events. This is when they were born. This is when they hit puberty. This is when they reproduced. This is when they died, right? Or however you might want to um, categorize your life, if you will. Same thing with the cell cycle. This is when this happens. This is when that happens. This is when this happens. Um, it starts when the first cell is formed, right? That's the beginning of the cell cycle. And then eventually that cell, assuming it doesn't die, 
is going to go all the way through and eventually itself will split into two new cells. And that is the end of that cell cell cycle and the beginning of two new cells cell cycle. It's basically considered the lifetime of a cell. But again, in our brains, probably when we think of lifetime, we think of birth to death because that's what humans do. We, you know, we're born and we die. Um, but on the cellular level, again, it's from the, that first, when that first cell splits into two, that is the beginning of that cell cycle. And then when that thing splits into two, that is the end of that particular cell cycle. I'll, I'll take questions, but I'll take them after I show you the next slide, because the next slide I'm going to show you, God bless you, is basically all the information that's written on this slide. Okay. So again, like I said, it's an ordered sequence of events. That's what we said on the last slide. Yeah. All we're saying is there's this, and there's that, and there's this, and then there's that. And it's always in that order. It's always G1, and then S, and then G2, and then mitosis. Now, the main thing we're focused on in this chapter is this, right? We're all about the mitotic phase. We're going to talk a lot about mitosis. So because we're mainly focused on mitosis, what we're going to focus on as far as the whole cell cycle, other than mitosis, is the S phase. Because really what we're talking about in this chapter is what happens with the chromosomes. This is a story of the chromosomes. Yes, we'll talk a little bit about what happens with the nucleus and some other things, but there's a lot of stuff that happens when a cell duplicates, because it doesn't just duplicate its chromosomes, it duplicates a lot of stuff. Think about the work it must take to duplicate everything you have and then split it in half perfectly, right? That's a very complicated thing, and we don't even talk about it. All we're focused on is these chromosomes. So for the exam, Sure, you might know that it goes G1, then S, then G2, and then the mitotic phase. I might not even ask you that. The most important thing that you understand is the cell cycle is broken down into two main phases, interphase and the mitotic phase. And we are focused on mostly on the mitotic phase. And when it comes to interphase, yes, it's also broken down into three different phases. But the one that we're more concerned with is S phase, because that's the one where the chromosomes duplicate. And that's the only thing we really care about in the context of this chapter. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of information moving forward on what happens in G1 and what happens in G2. But it's not very important. I'm only including that information because your book includes that information and I teach out of the book because it's a 100 level course. But for... Um, for independent work, you might look that up. What happens in G1 and what happens in G2, other than what I tell you? Because yes, in S phase, that's when it's getting ready to uh, duplicate. But think about it. Cells have very specific jobs. So they're doing very specific tasks. And they're probably doing those specific tasks in G1 and G2. Now let's get a little bit deeper into this conversation about interphase. Like I said, you do need to know that the whole cell cycle is broken down into two stages, interphase and the mitotic phase, right? So now, for now, we're focusing a little bit more on the interphase. It is worth noting that it spends most of its time in interphase, at least 90%. I'm not going to ask you that number. I might not even ask you the fact that it spends most of its time in interphase, but if anything, that'll be all I ask. What does it spend more time in, mitosis or interphase? The answer is interphase, but I probably won't ask that. And that's just when it's doing its thing. That's when kidney cells do their kidney cell things, brain cells do their brain cell things. Of course, then it hits the S phase. That's when it's getting ready to grow, getting ready to duplicate. So obviously it's going to get bigger. It's going to duplicate everything. Um, I like this. Duplicate doubles everything, then it's cytoplasm. I'm not going to ask you that for the exam. But again, what we're focusing on is the chromosomes, right? We're going to talk about how the chromosomes duplicate and what they do. But this is a good, like, oh, yeah, keep in the back of your mind. Other stuff happens, too. It's not just the chromosomes that duplicate. It's everything. It's all the different, you know, if it's a plant cell, all the chloroplasts are duplicating. If it's a um, animal cell or a plant cell, all the mitochondria are duplicating. So anyway, as far as this slide is concerned, the most important thing to know is that the cell spends most of its time in interphase. And for those of you who have already done your lab, you've already demonstrated this. 
remember you that part online where you click this and that and it says what's which one is this and you click it which one is that and you click it and then at the end it gives you a chart right and most of them most of the cells you saw were in interface and that website didn't do that on accident it's because if you were to right now look take an onion tip slice it up and look at it in the microscope most of those cells would be an interface and then fewer of them would be going through mitosis because usually a cell is going through interface. So any questions about this slide? Okay, again, we're still focused on interphase for now. And I want to point something out again. Interphase itself is broken down into G1, S, and G2. Just like if you were to say the day is broken up into AM and PM, right? And then you're going to say, all right, let's talk about AM. AM is broken down into pre-dawn, dawn, and, I don't know, pre-noon, right? So you're taking that one time fragment and you're subdividing it. Now, what we're doing here is, again, we're talking about interphase and we're subdividing it. G1, S, and G2. All of that falls under the category of interphase. And we're going to zoom in and talk a little bit more about S phase, even though I've already told you what you need to know. Again, S phase is just a part of interphase. And again, interphase is just a part of the whole cell cycle. This is when chromosome duplication happens. The easy way to remember that is because S stands for synthesis, DNA synthesis. That's when it happens. And again, like I've already said, regarding cell reproduction, which is what we're talking about in this chapter, um, this is the most, event of, most important event of interphase anyway, because that's all we're talking about is what's happening to the to the chromosomes. That's what we're focused on on this chapter. And I keep repeating myself. I might make it a test question. Someone will still miss it. It's like, how many times did I say the last three chapters, this exam is about energy. This exam is about energy. This exam is about energy. This exam is about going from sun energy to ATP energy. And then people, so many people wrote reproduction as the answer to that question. So I'm saying this over and over again right now. This chapter is all about what happens to the chromosomes. Any questions about that? All right, so we've talked about those most important phase of interphase. Let's quickly discuss these other things because your book did G1 and G2. If I were you, I wouldn't write any of this down. Give your hand a break because I'm telling you right now, I will not ask you anything about G1 or G2. But your book does talk about it. Yes, it is part of a G phase. Yes, it goes G1 and then S and then G2. Ah, that's it. That's all you need to know. Will this be on the test? Nope. If anything, if anything, just know that if we're looking at interphase, it starts with G1, and then goes to S, and then goes to G2. If anything. So if this was, let's just say, mm -hmm. if this was on the test, and it asked what is G1, basically we would put before the S phase. Great question. Right. Yes, yeah, so there would definitely be no question where I say what is G1 or what is G2. If anything, there might be a question that says, put the phases of interphase in order. And your options will be some version of G, G the correct answer will be G1, S, G2. And like a, an incorrect answer might say G1, G2, S. And another incorrect answer might say S, G1, G2. Um, and I'm thinking, I'm so glad you asked this because I'm already starting to think about how I'm going to write the exam. And if you guess any of those, even the wrong one, I think you'll get partial credit because then I'm going to have some really wrong answers like prophase, metaphase, and anaphase, which has nothing to do with interphase, right? And if you guess those, you get zero points. Just like if you guessed glycolysis when a question was asking about photosynthesis, you got zero points for that. So I'm glad you asked that. So keep that in the back of your mind. Study. Study these, this information. So, basically, you just need to know what's before the S phase and what's after the S phase. Yeah, if anything. If anything, I'll, I'll ask you to put interphase in order. G1, S, and then G2. And admittedly, that is a little bit tricky because you might expect, you know, who, you were to, if you were to ask anybody on the street to put that in order, I almost guarantee you they get the G1, G2 part, at least in the correct order, but it's not common sense what comes first, S or G1, right? So that'll be the hardest part is remembering that S, oh, wait, here, I figured out a way to remember it. So S stands for synthesis, right? 
But here's another little hint in this discussion. S splits G1 and G2. There we go. Easy way to remember it. Yes, sir. G1 splits, right? Yeah, well, yeah, like S is splitting the gap phases. G1 and G2, what comes in between them? S, because S splits them apart, so to speak. It splits them, splits them. So we, we, even though I'm looking at this slide uh -huh. in the interface, we can forget about the mitosis where once they're split, they're separated. I start all over. We know it's almost like block that out. Yes. It's For, just not asking about that. Exactly. If any question asked about interphase, we're only talking about this stuff. If the question asks about interphase, we're not talking about mitosis. Just like if the question asks you about mitosis and people got caught up on this on the lab, if it's asking about mitosis, doesn't include interphase. Yeah, obviously they're connected to each other and you have to talk about one if you talk about the other. But as far as questions are concerned, if the questions are about mitosis, you know, don't list anything from interface. And if the question's about interface, don't list anything from mitosis. Good question. Yeah, that's it. Anything else? All right, let's move forward. Oh, this is basically what we already said. You guys asked such good questions. It's like you read my mind and knew what I was going to tell you next. All right, so here we go. We're talking again now about the whole cell cycle. So let's zoom out. We've been in the past few minutes talking about interphase. Now we're backing out again, talking about the whole thing, interphase and mitosis, right? So looking at the whole thing, now let's zoom in to mitosis. So that's this little section right here, this little wedge of the pie, this slice of pizza right here. Da -da -da. There we go. Mitosis is not a part of interphase. Mitosis and interphase together make up the whole cell cycle. Interphase is one thing, mitosis is the other. We've already talked about how they're related, right? Because you can't have mitosis without S phase, but still, they are separate things. So you will get a test question that says, just like on the lab, list the phases of mitosis in order. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. No need to write that down because I'm gonna tell you later, but that's the answer. And there'll be different versions of that. And if you get it wrong, you'll get partial credit as long as your answer includes some version of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. If you guess anything that has interphase or any other word that does not belong in mitosis, and I'm gonna throw some really crazy ones out there, and God forbid, please don't pick something like photosynthesis. I will put photosynthesis as one of the options. We are talking about mitosis, so please don't choose photosynthesis as any options, okay? You will get partial credit as long as you get some version of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Anyway. Yes, um, mitosis is not a part of interphase. As you already know, mitosis um, is when the nucleus and everything else divides, everything inside of it, and that leaves us with two daughter nuclei. Um, yeah, that's a part of the story, but let's not fix on that. I probably won't ask you anything about that. You'll see why later, we'll come back to that. But yes, it's there. Yes, technically we start with one nucleus, you have a cell that has one nucleus in it, and then eventually you have a cell that has two nuclei in it, and then eventually that cell separates, but we'll get to that later. I guess the only reason that this is important as far as test questions are concerned, and you'll see it on the study guide, there's a question that says something like, what happens if a cell starts mitosis, it goes through mitosis, and it completes mitosis, except the cells themselves don't split. And the answer to that test, that study guide question is, it would have two nuclei, right? Because if mitosis is all about the nucleus, and then later we're going to learn about something called cytokine oh, <laughs> cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is when the cell itself splits. And yes, cytokinesis um, and mitosis happen at the same time, but they are technically different things. When we're talking about mitosis, we're only talking about the nucleus and its chromosomes. Cytokinesis is the whole cell. So again, if mitosis were to happen but not cytokinesis, you would end up with two nuclei. Then you get really crazy, which I won't do on the exam. But then I could say, well, what happens if it goes through mitosis again and doesn't go through cytokinosis, cytokinesis again? Then you would have even more nuclei inside the cell. But the point here is that I guess the purpose of mitosis, again, is to make Two new nuclei, uh, two new nucleus nuclei, 
each with a, a new set of chromosomes, identical to each other. And then, or simultaneously, if you're getting uh, technical, then the cell itself splits, and that's called cytokinesis. Um, yeah, so for the exam, some more important things that are really important, as you already know from the lab, what are the results of mitosis? Two genetically identical daughter cells. The most important thing here, I mean, yeah, daughter cells, but here we go. Two, not four, we'll talk about that later, and genetically identical. Because again, like I said, some parts of this exam are going to be a lot of comparing and contrasting mitosis to meiosis. Mitosis, you end up with two cells. Meiosis, which we'll talk about later, you end up with four. With mitosis, you end up with identical cells. With meiosis, which we'll talk about later, you end up with unique cells. So again, those two circled things are very important when identifying or comparing and contrasting mitosis versus meiosis. And one slightly good way to remember the fact that um, mitosis gives you identical cells, but meiosis gives you unique cells. Just think about this, like there is no human that is a perfect copy of their parents, right? You couldn't be because you are, meiosis is not a perfect copy, right? You get a little bit of this, a little bit of that. That's meiosis, right? There are no clones of humans anyway, right? So you are not a perfect copy of your parents. Hopefully that helps you remember. Any questions about the cell cycle? And again, before I leave this, I'll just remind you, the whole thing is broken down into interphase and mitosis. And then the interphase itself is broken down into G1, S, and G2. And now we're about to talk about mitosis. And again, we've talked about the big picture of mitosis, which is that we have mitosis and then simultaneously, we also have cytokinesis. But now we're really gonna get into the four stages of mitosis. And we'll get into a little bit more um, information about what specifically happens during cytokinesis. All right, mitosis and cytokinesis. Here's a test question coming up on the next slide. List the four distinct phases of mitosis. And if you put them in order, it will be prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Now let that sink in. As we move forward, I'm going to describe to you what happens in prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. But for now, keep that in mind. You need to know that. You need to know it in order. And again, the test question will have those options in different orders. And then there'll be some really wrong ones that might include interphase or S phase or G2 or, or respiration or some other garbage, right? So as long as your answer includes only those four things, you will at least get half credit. If your answer includes anything like G1 or photosynthesis or respiration, then you will receive zero credit. What else to tell you about that? Oh yes, another thing, I'll go ahead and tell you this. There'll be two questions that'll look similar. And read them carefully. One question will say, list the phases of mitosis in order. And then another question is gonna say, in this phase, this happens. And I'm about to teach you all this. In this phase, that happens. In this phase, this happens and they are not going to be in order, okay? So make sure you do not answer those questions the same because I always see that. Somebody will get this question right, put it in order, and then they'll see that other question, and instead of reading this happens here, this happens there, they just put it in order, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then they get it wrong, which is sad because at least their mind was almost in the right place. But any questions what we have so far? All right. Let's talk about prophase. Before prophase can even happen, well, first of all, let me say this. I mean, I've said it before. Let's see who remembers. What is the main thing we're focused on in this chapter? Because remember, cells are splitting, and all kinds of stuff is getting duplicated and moving around. But what are we focused on as far as duplication and moving around? Well, re yeah, what's about reproduction? But chromosomes, yes. Remember that. This chapter is all about what happens to the chromosomes. This is the story of the chromosomes. 
and they're moving around, right? So the first thing we need to talk about if this whole thing is about chromosomes moving around is how do they move around? There are no cellular Ubers, right? There is no bus. Chromosomes don't have their own vehicles. So there needs to be something to move them around. And what moves them around? It's called the mitotic spindle. Technically, it is a football-shaped structure that has microtubules. I don't care about that information. Here's what you need to know. The mitotic spindle is the thing that moves around the chromosomes. That's it. That's how they move around. And I probably won't even specifically ask you what a mitotic spindle is. However, when I describe what happens in prophase and I describe what happens in metaphase and anaphase and telophase, part of that description is going to use this word mitotic spindle. So to understand what I'm saying when I say the mitotic spindle does this, the mitotic spindle does that, obviously you need to know what a mitotic spindle is. So again, for the exam and for understanding what I'm about to say, the only thing you need to know is the, my, the mitotic spindle. That's the thing that moves around the chromosomes. I think your book might even get very specific and points this out. Um, let's see if I can show you. The mitotic spindle, if you could zoom in, it's attached to those little centromeres. It's attached right there at the middle of the chromosome. So you can see there's one, like right here, this mitotic spindle. Well, here, let's do this one. This mitotic spindle is attached to this sister chromatid. This mitotic spindle is attached to that sister chromatid, right? They're attached and they're going to move around. And spoiler alert, I'll tell you a little bit this, about this later. It's a tug of war. So in this particular picture, right now they're all lined up in the middle. But what you don't see is that these are pulling this way, right? These are all pulling this way and these are all pulling this way. You can't see that, but it's like a tug of war going on right now. All right. So here we go. We're about to talk about prophase. And remember, it's all about the chromosomes. Did you have a question? Right quick. Yeah. I've been looking at this wrong the whole time. Uh, see on the spindle where it looks like two. Right here? Um, this right here. I thought this, these mm -hmm. were, I thought those were the, the chromatins. Oh, good. I'm glad. Sam, glad you pointed that out. I didn't even think about that. So he's pointing out, this is very good, that these right here, those are the chromosomes. Of course, depending on when you look at it, the chromosomes could be at any different place, but right now they happen to be in the middle. These right here, and I don't even get into these details, but that thing right there, those are called the, well, I won't even get into what they're called. Those are just the things that make the spindles. That's where the spindles come from. Good. I'm glad you pointed that out. Besides, in a picture, this is good. I'm not going to show you like this picture and say, which one's the chromosomes, which one's the mitotic spindle, right? You don't need to worry about that. Just know what the mitotic spindle does. That way, when I use it in the descriptions of the four phases, you know what I'm talking about. So once they break apart, the yep. sisters in the middle, yep. they, they go to opposite sides? Yep, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Anybody else? Okay, so again... We're about to talk about prophase, excuse me. Yeah, we are about to talk about prophase, but we're about to talk about mitosis. Obviously the first stage is prophase. And you need to remember the whole idea here is that we have this nucleus full of chromosomes that have, been du that have already been duplicated. And what we wanna do is move those, du those chromosomes apart and then form two new nuclei. That's the goal here, right? So let's say I had a bag, a Kroger bag full of yarn right here. And I put it on the table. And I gave one to O'Brien and one to Thornabar. And I said, all right, and this is what? Three, six, nine. Nine balls of yarn, right? That's nine balls of yarn. This is nine balls of yarn. I give this to O'Brien, and I give these nine balls of yarn to Thornabar. And I said, all right, I want you to separate it, do half on this side, half on this side. And I want you to separate yours and do half on one side, half on the other. Who's going to win that race? No, he would probably, right? His are nice little balls. All he has to do is like, okay, half here, half here. His has got this tangled up mess. He's got to pull them apart. It's going to be harder for him, right? He's going to win the mess. So let me ask you, ask you this. I wish I had it. Eh, this will work, sort of. It's a little bit dirty. I'm not going to actually do it. I don't want you to get your hands dirty. <laughs> all right, imagine that's a bunch of chromosomes in there, right? And I'm like, all right, man. 
Here's what I need you to do. I'm going to make this a real nucleus. There we go. Now it's all sealed off. All right. So I'm right here. I want you to separate this. I want you to separate these chromosomes, half on this table, half on that table. What's the first thing he's going to do when I hand him this bag? Open it, right? You can't separate it, half on this table, half on that table, if it's in the bag. So keep those two things in mind. This exam will be about trash bags and yarn. Not really. But keep in mind that this is the yarn that you want. And then if you're going to separate stuff, you got to get it out of the bag first, right? If you can remember that, this will help you what I'm about to teach you. Here we go, prophase. The first thing that happens in prophase that we're going to talk about is the fact that the chromosomes coil up. Meaning, and I'm going back to this picture I just had before, your chromosomes usually look like this. Boop. I'm going to put a big I for interphase. That's what they look like in interphase. They're just out and wiggly and squiggly. In this picture, you can tell one string from the other because it's yarn and not chromosomes. But in a microscope, as you already know from lab, it's just a big mess. You cannot distinguish one chromosome from the next. But because your cell needs to move them apart and separate them, the first thing they're going to need to do is get them nice and neat and coil them up. So they're going to go from this squiggly mess here to that nice and neat balls, so to speak. So that's step one of pro. Actually, let me back up. Everything I'm about to tell you about prophase, I'm going to give it to you in order, but you don't need to know the order in which stuff happens in prophase. What you need to know is this is all the stuff that happens in prophase. So anyway, like we said, the chromosomes coil up because again, you're trying to move those balls of yarn. You want them to be balls of yarn, not squiggly old intertwined, tangled up mess of yarn. As we already know, because we talked about this in interphase, S phase, matter of fact, I'll write that here. Interphase, I'll abbreviate. S phase of interphase. The chromosomes have already duplicated, right? So they're already sister chromatids. And like we already talked about a couple slides ago, the centromere has attached to them because that's the thing that moves them. And this is all about how the chromosomes move. Here's the other part that I just talked about when I talked about the trash bag. In order for these chromosomes to go to different sides of the cell and form new nuclear membranes, new nucleus, right? Well, we got to get rid of the old one. Just like I said with him, the first thing he would do is open that trash bag, right? Get rid of the trash bag. Get me to the chromosomes. So that's the first thing that happens in prophase. Or not the first thing. That's one of the thing, that's one of the first things that happens in mitosis, right? Because this is prophase, this is the beginning of mitosis. Another thing that happens, and this should be common sense, now that I, now that you know what a cent uh, centromere is, the centromeres have to attach to the chromosomes. Because if we're going to move the chromosomes around, the thing that moves them has to attach. So all this, in my opinion, from here to here, this is all very intuitive. You would almost expect that that has to be what happens in the first step of mitosis. The chromosomes have to coil because you're going to separate them. Um, yes, obviously the chromosomes have already duplicated. They're sister chromatids. That happened in S phase. Yes, obviously the nuclear envelope has to break up because you're trying to move them to different sides of the cell. And yes, the, attached, the um, centromeres have to be attached because you're going to move them. The part that's a little bit tricky is this one right here because this is not necessarily intuitive. But at this point in the process, in prophase, right, all the centromeres are attached, all the stuff I have lifted, listed. And at this point, because you're not seeing it in motion, but what's happening is all the chromosomes that are all over the place, they're actually starting to move towards the center of the cell to begin with, which sounds counterintuitive because we know that the purpose, the end goal is to get them apart from each other. But the first thing they're going to do is move together. But yeah, that's how that works. So for the exam, I'm not going to say what happens in prophase and then you list all this. The question is going to say, in which phase um, does the nuclear envelope break into pieces, the spindle attaches to the centromere, and the chromosomes move towards the center of the cell? And you know, you'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I recognize that. That's prophase. You see the difference in those questions, that type of questioning, right? You don't have to memorize and regurgitate everything that happens in prophase. Instead, I'm going to give you what happens in prophase, and you need to recognize it as prophase. I might list everything on this slide. I might list one thing on this slide, or I might list some things on this slide. Either way, the idea is I give you some of this information, and you're like, hmm, 
That's right. That's prophase. And again, in my mind, and I hope in your mind too now, this is all intuitive, except maybe the last one. All this other stuff has to happen in the first stage of this process. Here's a picture of what we're talking about on this next slide. Um, on the left is interphase. We're done talking about that, but this goes back to what I was talking about. The whole big spaghetti mess. If you can't see one chromosome from the next, they're just all unraveled. They're just a bunch, it's just a big spaghetti mess, big yarn mess in interphase. Now here we have prophase, it's beginning, right? These things, the mitotic spindle's getting ready because we know it's gonna attach. And at this point, it has attached, right? So now all the chromosomes, they're all over the place, but they've attached to the centromere, the nuclear envelope is gone. You can't see this, but they're starting to move towards the middle. So let me ask you this. Whoops. Like I said, they are moving to the middle. That's what they're actively doing in, in prophase. So what do you think might define the next phase? If I'm telling you right now that these are moving towards the middle, at what point do you think the next phase is the next phase? Yeah. Don't overthink. Well, that is the next phase, but I'm telling you right now, as we're looking at prophase, what's happening? The chromosomes are moving towards the middle. So what a point do you think we go from being in prophase to being in metaphase? They're all lined up. Yes, they're all lined up. And what were you saying? When they get to the middle, that makes sense. That has to be common sense. If the whole thing in prophase is that moving towards the middle, then once they hit the middle, that, that was the goal of prophase, right? It is no longer in prophase. It is then in metaphase. Obviously, at this point, the spindle's fully formed up. That was included in the book, so I included it too. I'm going to put an X in that, just so when you're studying, I'm going to focus on that. That's a, that's a foregone conclusion. Um, the centromeres are lined up between the two poles of the spindle, um, meaning that's a fancy way of saying uh, the centromeres are lined up. Right? You can see the centromeres are lined up between the two poles of the spindle. All that means right here, this bullet point, written verbatim from your book is that the chromosomes are lined up in the middle. And the easy way to remember that in my mind is the way I always said it as a student is metaphase is when the chromosomes met in the middle. It's that easy, right? They met in the middle, that's, chromo that's metaphase. And as this is happening, and this is the hint for what's coming next, as, yes, they've met in the middle, and that's probably what the test question is going to ask you, in which phase are all the chromosomes in the middle? The answer is metaphase. But what's happening at this point is they sit there for a while. They're in the middle, perfectly lined up like that picture shows. But what's happening is there's a tug of war. These spindles are pulling this way. These spindles are pulling that way. They're pulling on each other. They're trying to get these sister chromatids to go that way and these sister chromatids to go that way, right? They're trying to pull them apart. That's what's happening in metaphase. The goal of metaphase, if you want to say that, is trying to split those sister chromatids apart. That being said, what do you think defines the next phase, which is anaphase? So let me back up. In prophase, the chromosomes were moving towards the middle. And then we said, okay, well, metaphase then starts once they hit there, once they get the middle. And now I'm telling you in metaphase, they're in the middle, and they're trying to pull them apart. So what do you think defines the next phase? When they pull think, towards the poles? I think you said it. I think she said it back there. It's when they are pulled apart. They're getting pulled right now. So it would make sense that the next phase must be defined by when that is accomplished. And that is anaphase. It's a tug of war, tug of war, tug of war, and metaphase, and then boom, once they are finally split, that is when you are in anaphase. So hopefully you see a theme here. Each phase, the chromosomes are basically going towards, they're working on going to the next phase. So then that next phase is defined by meeting the goal of the previous phase. So when we get back, we'll do a quick review of prophase and anaphase, and then we'll talk about, we'll finish it up with anaphase and telophase. If you came in, all right, if you're online, remember I'm gonna send you a video or I'll post the video and the questions later. Um, if you came in late today, I think it was on the U. No one else came in late, right? 
All right, so I don't need any emails. I'll get you written down right now, Tyrus. And check your emails. Please read. I know it's a lot. This will be the last time I post this many posts. But read those posts that I put. This is to help you pass. There's free points out there for you. Um, before I quit, <clears throat> before I quit recording, did any of you online have any questions? All right. Good luck at the football game, and have a good weekend. Yeah, they're, this yeah they're going to Wesleyan. Oh, okay.